Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and uh, today I'd like to talk about I'm Alan Partridge, um, the British TV comedy first broadcast in 1997 with season one, and then in 2002 with season two. And, uh, of course, Alan Partridge is a creation of Steve Coogan, and uh, as well as Steve Coogan, the series was uh, written by uh, Peter Bainham and Armando Iannucci. If you don't know who Alan Partridge is, Alan Partridge is this uh, hilarious comic creation of Steve Coogan who first graced British TV screens back in the 1990s um, in a show called The Day to Day. Um, but then he kind of had his own show with um, Knowing Me, Knowing You, um, in which we see Alan Partridge as this kind of amalgam of all the cheesiness, all the cliches, all the blandness, all the ridiculousness of uh, much of the uh, TV personalities, let's say, or talk show hosts of, uh, of British TV, you know, perhaps certainly when I was a kid, you know, in the, in the 1980s. He's kind of a perfect parody of these, these guys. And um, he has a talk show. Now, by the time we get to I'm Alan Partridge, the, the series I'm talking about, um, Alan has lost this TV show. Um, he's not given a second series. And it's from that disappointment and that kind of disaster in Alan's life that uh, the comedy and the drama comes throughout the two seasons of um, I'm Alan Partridge as he tries to regain his TV career. In season one, um, we're introduced to uh, many of the supporting characters. We have Lynn, his uh, faithful PA. She's a kind of rather fusty, um, dour personality, but incredibly dependable and, uh, you know, a real foil to Alan. Um, he, she's, she often bears the brunt of his frustrations. She's played brilliantly by Felicity Montague. And then we have... Um, this Geordie guy from the northeast of England, Michael, who works in the hotel uh, that Alan lives in, because Alan's wife Carol has left him, and he's uh, Alan as well as losing his TV show, his marriage is in tatters, and he's having to live in this kind of travel inn, this kind of budget hotel, um, which you see thousands of in the UK as you travel up and down the motorways. Um, I believe this one is somewhere in Cambridgeshire. Uh, so Alan in this hotel has this friend Michael and then the other staff at the hotel are kind of regular characters as well. Susan who's like the manager, she's like ultra professional, she's always got this smile on her face. Alan kind of fancies her and then um, you have these two younger people as well who work there who just continually mock Alan. So season one is all about Alan um, losing his uh, contract with the BBC for a second series and kind of moping around really this hotel. Uh, he still has a job as a radio DJ for Norfolk Radio, um, right in the, you know, the back of beyond in the, uh, the English countryside. Uh, he has like the graveyard shift kind of like in the early hours of the morning and uh, you often see him kind of uh, in his studio. Uh, you know, with phone-ins, etc. So in season one, Alan loses his uh, contract uh, from the kind of head of programming of BBC. Alan kind of sticks a cheese in his face, this block of cheese in his face, and then runs off. In the second episode of season one, Alan kind of cowardly sacks his production company uh, after he finds out he's, he hasn't got a second series um, via answer phone message. <laughs> And uh, he has this kind of um, brief fling with his receptionist, and um, I think her name's Jill, and uh, quite hilariously takes her on a date to an owl sanctuary. <laughs> and then the next episode, Alan is, um, which I think is one of the funniest episodes of the whole thing, Alan um, offends the whole farming community of Norfolk. He makes these, uh, <laughs> these really kind of... Um, barbed comments about farmers 
pumping chemicals into their animals and having kind of massive chickens in their sheds and all this kind of thing, which um, creates mayhem um, in the in the farming community. And uh, that's got a great cameo from Chris Morris as well. It's a brilliant episode. The next episode, Alan is just really bored. <laughs> if you just follow him around trying to fill his, his day, everything for Alan is getting at this TV show. And now that's not a possibility. He's just wandering around aimlessly back and forth to the petrol station um, at one point he dresses up like a zombie which is really funny um, and kind of terrifies Susan in the reception and then um, the next episode five is just one of the best as well where these Irish TV executives come over hoping that Alan might work for them and um, Alan just manages to insult them and the whole people of Ireland. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and then um, then he's, he's kind of trapped uh, in this house at the end of the house of this deranged fan. And uh, Alan has to escape and, you know, it's just an absolute highlight. And then the last episode, Alan almost does get his TV show back on track. Tony Hares, the guy who cancelled him, uh, dies unexpectedly and the new controller is someone who likes Alan and just as he's about to sign the contract for Alan's new series he dies of a heart attack and um, Alan kind of <laughs> forges his signature <laughs> just after he dies. Um, yeah so season one is just absolutely fantastic it's just so funny um, all kind of the action based around this travel tavern, this, this budget roadside hotel. Season two, we meet Alan again, but this time he's living in a static caravan. He's having a new house built. He's still not on the TV. He's kind of written a book which he's trying to flog. And um, he has this Ukrainian girlfriend who is uh, has got a really kind of weird sense of humour. <laughs> um... Lynn is still around. And between season one and season two, Alan had some kind of major breakdown and he put on loads of weight and I think he kind of, he drove all the way to Dundee uh, in his bare feet. Um, and really season two, uh, Alan's in kind of various scrapes. He, he tries to uh, talk to a bunch of kids in a secondary school, which uh, predictably goes uh, really badly. In the second episode he's invited to present a sales conference for these, um, I think they make fireplaces, this company makes fireplaces and uh, <laughs> it's really crazy bit, Alan kind of impales his foot on the fence uh, railing uh, which is really unexpected and such a weird piece of comedy but really funny. And then in the next episode, which I think is the funniest of season two, he meets this guy called Dan. And he, he kind of he has some kind of bromance with Dan. He, he just thinks this guy is brilliant. And uh, he drives a Lexus like Alan and has a similar sense of humour. They're both kind of quite pompous and uh, up themselves. Um, so Alan kind of like idolises this Dan character. But then it turns out Dan and Dan's wife are, are swingers <laughs> and Alan is completely horrified by this and uh, he kind of runs for the hills when he finds out. In the next episode Alan um, is trying to organise this bondathon where he, he's trying to get him and uh, Michael, his friend Michael, who now works in a petrol station, he's the guy from the hotel in the first series. They try to watch all the James Bond films and uh, it's kind of a good cameo from Peter Serafanovich in uh, in this in this as well. Uh, next episode's about Alan um, kind of avoiding the tax man, and uh, and then finally in the last episode, uh, Alan's invited to Lynn's baptism at the at the Baptist church, and the book that Alan's uh, written is kind of pulped at the end. This is complete. No one bought it, and. Uh, all copies are destroyed. So Alan Partridge, I mean, I've watched quite a few of the series. I think um, I'm Alan Partridge is the funniest one. Um, 
I think season one is funnier than season two. I have to be honest. I think season two is a bit variable. Uh, season one is far more consistently funny, although there are um, really funny moments in season two as well. Um, it's just, I suppose, you know, cringe comedy at its at its funniest, really. Um, and his kind of small mindedness, his his parochial um, sense of what he thinks is right about. Britain, particularly Norfolk, where he lives, is just really kind of close to the mark with with a lot of uh, kind of, I suppose, Middle England, um, and it is just really funny. <laughs> That's just it's just so worth watching. Um, Steve Coogan is just absolutely awesome. You know, you could argue that some of it's a bit hit and miss, but when it when it does hit, it hits hard and it is just really funny. I mean, there's this great moment in the second series where he's kind of he wants to get his friend Dan's attention. He's going, Dan, Dan in the car park. And then you think he stopped and he turns around and he goes, Dan and he keeps going. It's just so funny. He you, you just got to watch it. Um Alan insulting the Irishman in um season one, where he says, you know, there's more to Ireland than this. He kind of some of the dialogue between Alan and the reception staff in the hotel in season one is absolute gold as well. Um, yeah, another funny thing about it is his rivalry with his um, the DJ who's after him, and they have these kind of real kind of heated exchanges just at the end of um, Alan's show and before this other guy takes over. I mean, that's really funny as well. So if you haven't seen I'm Alan Partridge. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out and uh, yeah a really funny show uh, please put down in the comments what you think of uh, Alan Partridge and your your favorite moments thanks for watching bye